commemorate the first non-stop Atlantic flight, the greatest air race ever held. And for the fastest times between London's post office tower and the Empire State Building in New York, £60,000 in prizes. The Harrier Jump Jet, piloted by squadron leader Leckie Thompson, set one of the best times in the race and made history as well. The first ever fixed-wing aircraft to operate from any city centre. The squadron leader's time, 6 hours, 11 minutes, 57 seconds. Welcome everybody to St Pancras Station in central London. Today we're replicating the 1969 Daily Mail air race where a Harrier jump jet took off from this very place and crossed the Atlantic in just over six hours. Can we beat that time in the modern F-35? So the plane is ready. All we have to do is close the canopy and get on our way. And we're off. Next stop, New York in 3,000 miles. Let's transition to horizontal flight. Bring the gear up. It's time to get the autopilot sorted. Speed is set to 300 knots. The plane is currently in terrain following radar mode as we're quite close to the ground. We'll set vertical speed mode and head up to 20,000 feet where we'll refuel for the flight ahead. We're in GPS follow mode which will take us over West Wales before heading out over the Atlantic. So as we head up to 20,000 feet take a moment to check out the new frame rate counter in the bottom left. Believe it or not, this video is actually at 60 FPS. But even with an RTX 2070, you still only get 30 FPS with Orbex scenery. Okay, that's 20,000 feet. Time for our first in-flight refuel. And with the uh, refueling done, let's take a roller coaster ride to the coast. Try not to panic. use the terrain following radar until we reach the coast. Wow, check out that frame rate, 24 FPS on a PC that gets 200 FPS in Fortnite. Good old X-Plane. And by the way, if you're wondering why our ETA suddenly increased, it's because I paused the sim to do life stuff between the last shot and this one.
This is as close as you can get to a roller coaster in aviation. Once we reach the sea, we'll climb to 30,000 feet and accelerate to Mach 1. And there it is, the last time we'll see land until Canada, apart from flying over Ireland, of course. Let's start that climb. Now we can speed up to Mach 1.2 and head for the USA. I'm told this plane can fly at Mach 1.6 and 50,000 feet, so let's see how high we can get. Residents of Ireland, I apologise for the broken glass. So here's 50,000 feet. As it turns out, this plane doesn't want to go past Mach 1.3, so we'll stay at that to save fuel. This is the last land we'll see until Canada. There's some fairly crazy weather here, but we should be fine as long as we stay out of the clouds. Time for our first refuel over the ocean. We're slowing to 300 knots and descending to 30,000 feet. With the descent done, it's time to fill up. I think we'll stay at 30,000 feet for the rest of the flight. Climbing to 50,000 again will burn a lot of fuel and probably isn't worth the efficiencies you make once you're up there. You can see the nose dip as we pass through Mach 1 again. A few more fuel stops will follow, but I wonder how many. The Harrier refueled a total of 11 times. Will we beat this record and its time? We'll skip through the uneventful cruise and refueling pretty quickly, but keep count. We refuel the F-35 en route around every half an hour. It's a thirsty beast at supersonic speeds. Let's have a roll for lunch. Of course the roll cost us some time, but we're still due to arrive at 9pm UTC. I told you there was some quality 60fps content during this flight. It's interesting how our ground speed varied during the flight at identical Mach numbers. This was due to the wind and speeds varied by up to 100 knots during the flight.
just off the coast of Canada, not long till we reach JFK. Here's our final left turn towards New York at 260 miles out. It's time to slow down and descend for our approach. Now we're at 10,000 feet, let's find the airport. The plan is to fly over the airport at a low altitude, then vector for the ILS. Here's our final descent, following the localizer to overfly JFK before our final approach. After hours of flight and what felt like endless refuels, our first sight of JFK Airport. There's the airport over our shoulder. There was a scary moment as we hit approach speed. Maybe we were too heavy, but the jet pulled a high alpha and we started falling. Luckily the jet recovered by itself, but it was definitely time to get this landing over with. We dumped some fuel to stabilise the angle of attack here. We begin the right turn towards the airport, let's hope we get this right. Go arounds take time after all. Here's the glide slope, now the F-35 doesn't auto land, so let's do our best. Autopilot off. Auto throttle, maintaining airspeed. What a great landing. Now, full brakes. Welcome to New York, but did we beat the Harrier? Bit floaty.
So, what was our final time? Remember, the Harrier took 6 hours 11 minutes in 1969. Our time? 5 hours 36 minutes. 50 years of progress and flying supersonic over Ireland and Canada has knocked 35 minutes off the flight time. To celebrate our flight, let's hover over to the gate. And in case you were wondering, we refueled seven times, four times fewer than the Harrier. Well, there we have it. Our journey is at an end. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember, you can always go around. Take care.